Welcome to Vogel Timeline, our quarterly news report keeping you up to date on the latest happenings here at the Vogel 3 and 4 site near Augusta, Georgia. In February, the 16th Vogel Construction Monitoring Report was filed with the Georgia Public Service Commission. This report highlights the milestones and costs associated with the reporting period of July through December of 2016. Westinghouse, the contractor for the Vogel 3 and 4 project, recently announced that it is restructuring its business and has filed for bankruptcy protection as part of this process. Georgia Power and the project's other Georgia-based co-owners, Oglethorpe Power, MEAG, and Dalton Utilities have been preparing for the possibility of a Westinghouse bankruptcy filing. While we are working with Westinghouse to maintain momentum at the site, we are also currently conducting a full-scale schedule and cost to complete assessment to determine what impact Westinghouse's bankruptcy will have on the project. Georgia Power will work with the Georgia Public Service Commission and the co-owners to determine the best path forward. Georgia Power will continue to take every action available to hold Westinghouse and Toshiba accountable for their financial responsibilities under the Engineering Procurement and Construction EPC agreement and the parent guarantee. One of the most important aspects of the Vogel 3 and 4 project is the NRC's ITEC process. Inspections, tests, analyses, and acceptance criteria. ITEC is the standard by which the construction of Vogel 3 and 4 units are measured based on the design. Recently, we caught up with David Woods, Vogel 3 and 4 ITEC manager, for an update. ITEC are inspections, tests, analysis, and acceptance criteria. There are approximately 873 ITAC per unit. We submit the ITAC to the NRC for verification, which ensures that the plant has been constructed as it was designed. In 2016, the ITAC team had an aggressive goal to submit 144 ITAC closures to the NRC. I'm proud to report that the ITAC team met its commitment. In 2017, the ITAC team is committed to submitting 127 closure notifications to the NRC. An example of one of these is a verification that the off-site power supply has been built as designed. The Vogel 3 and 4 project has recently submitted a license amendment request to the NRC. This amendment request would consolidate 227 ITAC per unit. This would gain efficiency for us and the NRC to prevent resource challenges near the end of the project. In 2017, we expect to have submitted 127 ITAC closures, successfully incorporate our ITAC consolidation law, and at that point, we'll be approximately 40% complete with ITAC verifications. The ITAC team is an integrated project team consisting of Southern Nuclear, Supplemental, and Westinghouse personnel. We interface daily with corporate engineering, corporate licensing, and Westinghouse corporate personnel to ensure that we have the proper documentation that allow ITAC closure. I'm excited to be part of the Vogel 3 and 4 project to be part of the first new nuclear build in 30 years. Thanks, David, for giving us an update on the importance of ITAC. We're focused on building a state-of-the-art nuclear facility here at Plant Vogel. But equally as important to us is building community relations and being a citizen wherever we serve. The citizens of Georgia Power, Vogel Chapter, recently donated proceeds of the fourth annual Sporting Clays Tournament held at the Sage Valley Lodge and Gun Club near Augusta and sponsored by Georgia Power, Westinghouse, and Fluor. More than 100 participants and volunteers attended the event, which is held in the fall. This year, a $100,000 donation was made to the Family YMCA of Greater Augusta in support of renovations to Camp Lakeside. The funds will also be used to sponsor children from the Burke County area to experience the camp free of charge. In addition, a $30,000 donation was made to the National Wild Turkey Federation in support of their ongoing conservation effort. Plant Vogel is surrounded by a vast expanse of land, which provides a unique wildlife habitat for many native species. We continue to support many conservation efforts in and around the Burke County area. 
The operational readiness milestones continue to move forward as we move towards operations. Here with more on the story is Karen Foley, Vice President of Operational Readiness for Vogel 3 and 4. Our operational readiness organization continues to make great progress in all areas to support testing and preparation for fuel loading and startup of our new units. Our team is committed to ensuring success of the projects. We are responsible for training and qualifying the personnel that will operate and maintain the plant. Operational readiness is also responsible for developing and validating our programs are in place to meet all nuclear regulatory requirements. Just to share some of our progress, in the first quarter of 2017, our second class of operator candidates completed their NRC license exam. Getting our operator's license is an important step in safely operating these units for years to come. Our training and licensing teams have done a great job in preparing our operators. As we move closer to operations, we continue our collaboration with our Southern Nuclear Operating Units. One way we do this is to support the refueling outages to provide our personnel in operations, maintenance, chemistry, and other departments valuable in-plant experience and help our teammates in the process. 2017 is a big year for operational readiness as all of the things we have been preparing for now have become a reality. Power will go into the plant for the first time in an event known as initial energization. We will hold the first drill for our emergency response organization and we will have accepted turnover of some of the yard support systems, including potable and raw water, yard fire, and backup diesel generators. Our permanent staffing is also on track to support all of our milestones. We're excited about the progress of our new nuclear units and the success of the project. Our goal is to build, to test, and to operate these units with safety. The health and safety of the public is our number one priority as we transition to building the first new nuclear plants in the United States in 30 years. Thanks so much, Karen, for the update on operational readiness. Well, that's all the news we have time for today. Thanks for joining us as we share the latest happenings here at the site and in our community. We look forward to seeing you next time for more great stories here on the Vogel Timeline Report.